Hey guys, welcome back to another scintillating episode of Purgatory Ironworks. And yes, we're going to leave that in. So, uh, my name, of course, is Trent Ty. Guys, I got a pretty cool little project for you today, straight from the pages of Jay Reekert, the guy that taught me. Uh, this is an unusual item, uh, simply because I've seen examples of this in the historical record, but Jay did it kind of differently. Uh, this is called a cooking trammel, and it's basically an adjustable hook. Back in the day, of course, you did not have a way to uh, turn the knob on your fire to make it hotter or colder. So what you had to do was raise the pot up or down over the fire. And that's what this lets you do. It's two pieces of iron. Uh, it's going to be one piece of uh, 3 sixteenths by 1 inch by, a, by 10 inches uh, for the main body. And the other piece is going to be a piece of either quarter inch round or 3 eighths round that's 11 inches long. There are four holes actually punched in this piece. And it works like this, really simply, and you can adjust the height of the hook up or down depending on which hole that you use. I have sold a lot of these. Jay sold a lot of these. So this is really a great exercise for learning how to punch. It's also something that you want to have on your table because it makes a little bit of money. Not a terribly complicated project, but it does take a little bit of time. These are usually fetched $20, $25 a piece, and uh, they are a cool item. So guys, without further ado, let's get into making Jay's Trample. Here we go. All right, guys, we are going to start out with this 1 inch by 3 sixteenths material. And the first thing that we've got to do is come in here. We've actually got to make the taper for the top hook. Now, you can save yourself a little bit of trouble if you'll actually cut this on a slant to start with. You don't have to, but it will save you a little bit of elbow work. And if you're doing a lot of these, uh, all the energy you can save is a good thing. And there's our first heat. Uh, you can see this bad boy is thickened up pretty well. Uh, we'll take another heat, come out, and go ahead and draw this out because uh, this guy is going to become the first hook uh, of our trammel. So back into the fire. All right, here we go again. That's a lot of hammering. And you guys, you can see what we've got here. We now have this piece pulled out. Uh, I'm going to round it up just a little bit. I don't want those sharp edges on there. And so now that we've got this piece ready, what we can do is actually go over to the horn of the anvil or the mandrel, either or. Uh, either or. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the horn of the anvil while I take my next heat. You just need to offset this and make the hook because this guy is going to hook off of the rack, the tripod, or whatever you're hanging it from. Going to the horn of our anvil, we have our piece. Now one of the things that I do is I like to offset that hook a little bit. And you can see what that looks like. Now that's not really clean right there, but that's okay because what I want to do is to come in and take another heat right here and actually make a pigtail. But I really do want this thing to be centered uh, with how it's going to hold the weight. So we'll take one more heat, make that pigtail, and that should do it for the top. 
Hey guys, what we do is we come out, we take our scrolling tongs, and we just use our scrolling tongs to turn our pigtail. And that, that look a whole lot better. That's what we want to do. Okay guys, now that we've got our hook done, what's going to have to happen is we're going to have to punch and drift four separate holes. Now this is kind of a curiosity here, and I may have said this before, but this is the only way I ever saw Jay make these items. Now, after, as I've spent a little more time researching, I have seen more what they call fire saws than this type of trammel. And a fire saw, basically instead of the punched holes, it actually has a jagged edge and an adjustable mechanism. But this is the way that Jay did it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do those four punched holes, one here in the bottom, and then three along the top. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, just a lot of elbow grease to get the hole punched and then to stretch it out, which we're going to use the mandrel for. So let me take another heat. And let's go from there. All right, guys, let's go for our first punch here. I'm going to set this right here on the top end. Now I'm going to be really aggressive with this. I'm going to try to go ahead and... Uh, do this in one setting here. Go right back over the Pritchell. Like I said, I'm going to be really aggressive in stretching this piece out. You can see there you go. So we're going to flatten this. Now, Jay used to take a lot of time to actually open this guy on up. Now, he actually calls in his designs uh, to use 3 8 material, which means you've really got to stretch that open. We're using quarter inch, but just because I feel like it, I'm going to take one more heat and open that up, girl up just a little bit more. Doesn't hurt anything to make those drifted holes really big. Like I said, you can be aggressive with it and in one heat actually punch it uh, and get it to where it needs to be. It's not going to hurt anything, just a matter of preference on that end. We're going to go right back to the Pritchell hole and open this girl on up. That is a hell of a balancing act. And there we go. Hole number one. Now, this piece, of course, is going to be turned up. It's going to get a 90 degree turn, and then we're going to have three other holes along the line here, which I need to go ahead and center punch and mark out. And then pretty much it's the same thing as what we just did. Punch the holes, open them up, stretch them out. In one heat. Okay, guys, there we go. Hammer all this back into shape, and now we have all the holes punched for our trammel. We'll do a little bit of cleaning up here. And now what we need to do is actually take this last hole in the end and bend it over 90 degrees. Uh, we do our secondary hook, and we are ready to go. All right, guys, we simply lay this over the edge of the anvil. You really want that bend to be sharp as you can. You really want that hole to line up as close to that edge as possible. This just makes everything go so much easier. Okay. And there, what we have here is this is actually the body of our tremble. We're ready to go on that end. All we need to do now is make our secondary piece. And uh, 
This bad boy is going to be close to being done. So guys, the next part of this is actually the really easy part. Uh, you need a piece of 11 inch uh, material. Jay usually call for 3 eighths. I usually go with quarter inch, but 11 inches, and it's real simple. All you need is a small hook on one end and then a point and a turnover on the other. This just allows you to uh, hang the pot and also make the adjustment. So I'm going to throw this in the fire, make the hook. I'm not going to do anything fancy with it. Uh, should, be, uh, should be pretty freaking easy. You know, you say that and then crap screws up. But we're saying it's going to be pretty freaking easy. All right, guys, uh, to make that little hook, I'm just going to flare one end. Uh, come to the horn of the anvil. Now, you can get fancy with this. Uh, again, that, that is completely up to your discretion. Uh, I usually don't get too terrible fancy. I do, however, normally offset this hook. So it looks a little bit like that. And I'm going to take one more heat and I'm going to flare over that edge. I say I'm going to flare over that edge. There we go. Okay. That's that side. We're going to switch her around here. Now the only thing I'm going to tell you is that you're going to actually draw this out to a point and then you're going to bend it 90 degrees, but you're going to bend it 90 degrees, not in line with the hook, but to the side. It makes sense when I show you. You really don't want any fancy treatments on this. Except you're going to come over here and usually give yourself about an inch. And the good you, you want to, actually you want to over a bit of 90 degrees. Uh, something a little over 90 degrees is where you want to be. Let's use the horn to do that. Something looking like that's where you want to be. Make sure she's in line. And there you go, there's your piece. So let's try it out. All right, guys, so you've got your two pieces here, and pretty simply enough, this comes through the bottom and actually hooks into uh, one of these three items here. And you can see this adjusts the heat or the, the height of the pot uh, up or down. Uh, this is called a trammel, and uh, there's also another version called a fire saw, which we may get to a little bit later. But again, nothing terribly complex, but a cool little item. So guys, that's it. This, uh, this is a pretty, pretty cool deal. Uh, Jay made a tremendous number of these uh, back in the day, and I'm not sure exactly where he got this particular pattern, but uh, because I've very rarely seen this done uh, by other blacksmiths in this particular fashion. So, don't know where that came from, but this is the way he did them, and that's the way I did it for you. Uh, cool item, if you guys do reenactments or anything like that, or Boy Scouts, or wherever you're doing cooking outdoors, this is really a good item to have on your table. Now, this is a very small one. The height is somewhat limited. Uh, from the other examples, the historical examples I've seen, sometimes those fire saws are, are you know, a good two feet. Uh, so, but hey, I sell a bunch of these. It's a good idea to have on your table. So guys, there you go. Pretty cool little project. Give you some punching, uh, some punching exercises and all that kind of good stuff. And hey, there you go. So fellas, hey, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Adios. Vaya con Dios.